We have a brand new AI chatbot called Claw 2.1. Now, Claw 2.0, if you've ever used it before, it's a large language model, it's a chat GPT competitor. They raised a ton of money from Amazon and it's become a real player. It's by a company called Anthropic. But 2.1 has things we've never seen before in this AI chatbot world, in this large language models. And let me go ahead and give you some of the key points here and then we'll take Claude here for the test drive because if you go to Claude.ai, it is now available to test out this new model, 2.1. So there's three big updates I'm gonna cover before we take it to the test drive here. The first one, a 200K context window. So that is 200,000 tokens. Just to give you some perspective on non-technical terms, that is 150,000 words now you could upload as a document to analyze or to summarize or to interact with. That's 500 pages of material. So that could be an entire financial statement like an S1 document. It could be an entire code base. It could be an entire book. And it says you could then use that content or that data and Claude could summarize it for you. You could do Q&A, you could forecast trends with financial data and things like that. And you could do this with multiple documents, compare and contrast, uploading multi multiple documents and count towards your context window of 150,000 words. Now I should note, this one update, everything else is actually included in the free version of Claude except this one. This one requires Claude Pro, which is $20 a month. So I'm actually gonna upgrade for this video because I've been using Claude for free, but with the 200K token context window, I have to upgrade. There's nothing that comes even remotely close. Now, just to give you some context of where we were before, Claude 2.0 actually had the largest context window. It was 120,000 tokens, but now, this 200,000 tokens, if you compare it with some chat GPT models like GPT-4, that's only 8,000. This is 200,000. These are not even in the same league now. Now here's another key point that is very useful, two times decrease in hallucination rates. So if you've ever used any AI chatbot like ChatGPT or Claude, you notice they just sometimes make stuff up. In fact, I've seen Claude 2.0 make some crazy things up. At one time, created an entire company, created an entire link to how much money they raised, and none of that was true. It kind of blew my mind. It was so sure, and I was so sure that it was giving me the right information, but I basically tested it on Google and it was all wrong. So that hallucination is a huge problem, and basically cutting in half, very, very useful update as well. And the third big update here is it's actually smarter, right? So each time they update these, they make them smarter. So here they ran a test and it says 30% reduction in incorrect answers. And here with this graph, and I'll link this below here if you wanna read the full post. With this graph, you could kind of see that the improvements it's made. Now, when we take it for a test drive, we'll do some testing on the context window and so on. And right now, it's not only available inside of Claude.ai, so the regular chatbot that's free to use, you could go there and test it out. And it's also available inside of the API. So if you use the Claude API to build your apps on, a lot of people are using the ChatGPT API from OpenAI. Some people are using Claude instead. And this now is a lot more useful with the 2.1 inside of the API and inside of the free chatbot. Okay, let's take this for a test drive. So go to Claude.ai. And if you haven't used Claude before, and maybe you're only using ChatGPT, or maybe you're using Bing or Bard, this is a worth a try. I probably split my week between Claude and ChatGPT. Recently, I've been using ChatGPT a lot more, but I'm really excited now with this context window and with all these improvements to try 2.1 even more. So right here, this is where your message will go. And then right here, this is where you could upload files. So it says files, five max, 10 megabytes each. And typically I get better results with CSV file, but it says you could do PDFs and text files as well. So let me go ahead and upload a document. I'm gonna do a TXT because with a Word doc, I have all kinds of problems. It usually gives me an error message. So I usually convert any Word document into a TXT. ChatGPT does a much better job with file formats that are Excel and Word and things like that. This is better with TXT and CSV files. Okay, so I uploaded this document. This is somewhere between 50 and 70,000 words. This is the biggest document I have right now. And usually I was breaking this up when I was using ChatGPT into much, much smaller files, right? The context window is very small here. 
Right now, let me go ahead and see if it could give me a one paragraph summary. And I'm gonna just see how long this takes. I'll let you know if I need to just cut this out. But right now, I just pressed enter and it says conversation with long prompts or large files may take a few moments. So I'll let you know exactly how long this took as soon as it's ready. So it took about 12 seconds only to go through this. Again, this is 50, 60,000 word document here. It says, this is a comprehensive guide on generative AI, focuses on introducing tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney, Dolly, and so on. So yeah, very accurate here on exactly a one paragraph summary of this. And let me see if I could just follow up and see if this takes 12 seconds every time or it's gonna have more of a hard time. Let me pull up my document here for prompts. I created this document before when I made a Claw 2 video, so I'll go ahead and link this in the description if you wanna get this as well. But this has basically, depending on the category, a bunch of different prompts. There's 100 prompts I put together here to do all kinds of analysis on different types of documents, which is really the best use case for Claude over any other large language model. So right here, I'm gonna take this. Who is the intended audience for this document? So this is kind of an interesting question because now it has to actually figure something out that is not just pulling direct information out. It has to analyze the whole document here to figure out who the target audience is. Let's see if it gets this right. Okay, this time it took about 20 seconds here to give me this answer. It says, based on the content and the tone, it seems to be intended for everyday people who are new to generative AI and wanna learn how to use this tool for personal professional projects, that's perfect. And then it gave me some key bullet points and I read through this and it's very, very accurate. It did a really nice job here. Now I'm gonna show you one more data analysis with numbers here to see how it does with that. But I wanna show you this chart here. It says Claw 2.1 open-ended conversation accuracy. So it says right here, 2.0 declines to answer and 2.1 the decline to answer rate has actually increased, which is one of my biggest frustration that I had with Claude 2.0. So right now I'm gonna ask it, how do you compare to GPT-4? Okay, this is a very simple question, right? Chat, GPT, Bard, and Bing all are gonna give me really good answers. They typically create a table kind of format for me. It says, I do not have access to GPT-4 and I can't make accurate comparisons. Lots of times it just says, AI has this thing created by Anthropic to be helpful, harmless, and honest. And it just keeps repeating itself <laughs> that way. So just a decline to answer part of it is a very huge downside for me. This was the same problem with 2.1 or 2.0, and it's the same problem with 2.1. Now, the incorrectness of answers has declined, right? But if it's refusing to answer more often, that's kind of a problem. So what I found is... Claude is extremely useful when it comes to analyzing data, better than anything else, especially with this insane huge context window of 150,000 words, right? That's not gonna be beatable by anyone, not even close. But when you want to get just answers to questions, not very useful. Bard does a better job and ChatGPT does a better job, but this does a better job sometimes in summarizing any type of text you paste into it too. You don't always have to upload and it's done a good job writing email copy for me. Okay, next let's look at some financial documents. Let's see how it works with numbers. So I have this document here. This is just S&P 500, and I'm gonna just ask it some questions. And if you wanna test it out, there is a website called Kaggle.com. This is where I got it. You have a bunch of different document types here. If you go to data sets, you could download all kinds of different data sets that are available here for download, and it's completely free to use. Let me go ahead and upload this. And I'm gonna to refer to my prompt book here. I have things based on doing analysis on financial data or analyzing just general data here. And right now I just said, give me the top 10 companies based on market cap specific to this document. Let's see what it comes up with. I'm checking here for accuracy and I'm checking for speed as well. Okay, and this took about 10 seconds and you got it right for the most part. You got the top 10, but it put alphabet twice, but he wouldn't know that because the data set also showed alphabet twice because it has two different types of stocks or class of stocks here. And the numbers here, this is supposed to be the market cap, but I thought he made a mistake, but then I looked back at the documentation here. So the Apple stock here, it shows something like eight trillion here as the market cap, which is not true, which is closer to three. So you got some things wrong. So you can see the market cap category just had the wrong numbers in it. So there was something wrong with the sorting of the regular data set that I downloaded very quickly from that website. But as long as you have accurate data set, and I've tested this out with 2.0, it 
and it also did a really good job with financial data and any type of PL and personal business data too that you have anything from QuickBooks that you could upload to it. Again, this is not private, so make sure you don't give us something very personal. But as far as doing a quick research for me off these type of CSV files, it did a really good job. And I'll do a deeper dive. This was more a first look. This just came out. So I've only had a couple hours here. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.